good afternoon everybody uh, i am dr miloni gadoya i am a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist practicing in apollo hospital uh, and uh, today we are going to be discussing about a very common and a very important topic which is called as pcos pcod or polycystic ovarian syndrome or disease now what exactly is pcod or pcos now pcos or pcod is mainly a lifestyle disorder which is very common in young women nowadays and we have a lot of girls ranging from the age of 15 to 18 who come to us with uh, problems of pcod now this is the most common gynecological condition which we face in our clinic every day now uh, pcod is a lifestyle disorder it also has a genetic predisposition so what exactly happens in pcod pcod is a hormonal it's a stage of hormonal imbalance where we have an imbalance between the male and the female hormones in our body so basically there is an increased levels of androgens in pcos which can cause the above symptoms which we are going to describe later it also causes certain low grade inflammation uh, which can cause these increased level of androgens and these increased level of androgen also cause insulin resistance pcod is almost almost it's never alone it's always a combination of symptoms now what are the basic presentation or the basic symptoms the patients come to us with so it the patients come to us with weight gain they come to us with uh, hair fall they come to us with acne irregular cycles and some of the patients come to us with infertility that is they are married and then they are not able to conceive since a long time they come to us with skin disorders and obesity and a lot of other disorders which are always associated with pcod so pcod or pcos is never a combination of all of these symptoms the, there are some symptoms which may be dominant like a patient may just come with irregular cycles or acne or weight gain or they may come up with hirsutism or acne or weight gain so it is always a combination of two or three symptoms and it's always diagnosed clinically and clinical and laboratory and ultrasound investigations together we can clinch on the diagnosis of pcod now the main presentations of pcod are they'll have weight gain they'll have irregular cycles that is the periods will not be regular they come every 2 to 3 months the saflo will be less and secondly they'll have hirsutism that is a lot of hair on their body their chin their back their chest so these will be the most common symptoms they'll have acne and these patients also suffer with a lot of eating disorders anxiety depression because of the weight gain and the peer pressure because this commonly occurs in the age of 15 to 18 and of course it can progress further so the presentation of pcod is these symptoms they are never alone they are always in combination now there are two types of pcod normally uh, there is a obese pco and there is a lean pco so most commonly what we see that is 30 to 40% of the patients who come with us are always in the obese category so they will always be overweight and they will all, they have will have these associated other symptoms along with the weight gain but the more a uh, minor category or the lesser category is the lean pco so pco is not necessarily that your fat your weight you know your obese or your overweight so that is why you have pco pco is a hormonal disorder where there is a hormonal imbalance in your body causing these problems and these can be triggered with stress anxiety and your lifestyle so lean pco patients also have insulin resistance and they also have the same symptoms what an obese pco have except the weight gain uh, lean pcod patients are better uh, patients because they are easier to treat and the uh, when you do these lifestyle changes and when you give treatment to these kind of patients they respond much better rather than obese pco patients in lean pco patients normally we do not tell them to lose weight because that is never an option so you have to have other modalities of treatment and forms of treatment for lean pcod patients now uh, what exactly uh, is the treatment for pco so pcod is never a gynecologist game it is always a multidisciplinary approach 
you need other forms of specialities to treat PCO along with a gynecologist. You will need a dermatologist, you will need a psychologist, you need a psychiatrist and a gynecologist to treat these kind of conditions. Now, uh, the main treatment for PCO is lifestyle changes, you know, weight loss, eating healthy. I know it doesn't sound very appealing because patients are also like, oh, there's no treatment for PCO. Why is there, there no treatment for PCO? Now, what are we going to do? So the main treatment is what the patient has to do. The patient has to have a healthy diet. The diet has to be uh, like restricted in carbs. It has to be more of protein. They have to include more of fruits, vegetables, nuts in their diet. And along with a regular exercise of at least 45 minutes, lasting 45 minutes has to be done every single day. Because in these kind of patients, weight loss, lifestyle changes, that means you have to cut down on alcohol, you have to cut down on smoking. And another thing is stress. Stress management is also extremely important. Because when the patient is stressed out, the patient is anxious, there are a lot of these stress-releasing hormones which are released in the body, which can add to the weight gain. So diet, extremely important main focus is on the diet. So that does not mean that you starve yourself, but you have to cut down on your sugar, you have to cut down on your salt intake, you have to cut down on all the junk what we eat every day and maintain a healthy lifestyle and a healthy diet. Losing, and if we have obese PCO patients who are overweight, their BMI is above a certain speculated level, we tell them, okay, you need to lose weight. Now, how much of weight loss? Usually, normally patients ask us, okay, how much do you want us to lose, doctor? So, you have to lose at least 5 to 10% of your body weight. So, if you are a 80 kilo patient, you need to lose at least 8 to 10 kilos to at least see the changes. And when you, your diet is restricted, low glycemic index, if you are having that low glycemic index diet, you will see changes in your body. You will see that the weight loss can trigger ovulation, the cycles become regular, and it also improves the insulin resistance. Now, normally, these PCO patients also have other hormonal or endocrine disorders along with the other symptoms. So whenever we do a panel, PCO panel, we check out their blood investigations, we check out the ultrasound, we normally see that these kind of PCO patients will have diabetes or they will be borderline diabetic. They will have hypothyroidism, that is their thyroid levels will, will be on the lower side. They will have hyperprolactinemia, that is the prolactin levels will be on the higher side. And they will have other metabolic disorders along with that like hypertension. So they may be borderline hypertension or they may have hypercholesterolemia. Hypercholesterolemia, that is their LDL levels or their cholesterol levels will be or triglyceride levels will be on the higher side. So that is the reason this insulin resistance is the main culprit which causes these metabolic disorders. Now, uh, what are the long-term sequel? We say, okay, PCO is a lifestyle disorder. Okay, we will maintain a healthy lifestyle. We will lose weight. But will this go away? So, like I said, it's a lifestyle disorder. It will not go away. It will not disappear. But yes, it reduces to a greater extent if you continue maintaining your weight, if you continue maintaining your healthy lifestyle, it does not disappear, but it definitely, definitely reduces. Your cycles can get regular. So this is the main thing. Now, how do we diagnose PCO? So we have a lot of patients who come to us and they just have an ultrasound which says, okay, PCO, polycystic ovaries, bilateral polycystic ovaries. But when we look at the patient clinically, patient does not have any symptoms. Patient does not have any weight gain. Patient has always maintained her weight and she does not have irregular cycles, nothing. So it, uh, is ultrasound the only way to diagnose PCOD? No. Ultrasound is not at all the only way. Ultrasound only helps you in diagnosis with PCO. So it only confirms the diagnosis of a PCO because ultrasound is extremely subjective. And there are criteria which are present in our books, which tell us okay, this is the size of the ovary, this weight of the ovary, the volume of the ovary should be this much. You should be seeing at least 9 to 10 small follicles inside the ovary to call it PCOD. 
So what do we do? How do we diagnose PCO? So PCO, obviously, we, di by, we diagnose it clinically with the symptoms, with the presentation the patient comes to us with. And we do a PCO panel where we do the hemoglobin, we do the CBC, we do the sugars, that is the HbA1c, the fasting blood sugar, the postprandial blood sugar. We do the cholesterol levels of the patient. We do the hormone levels of the patient like thyroid, prolactin. We see the FSH, LH, and we also see the fasting insulin levels. So these are the certain blood investigations we do in a PCO patient so that we can diagnose the other metabolic disorders in the PCO patient along with the PCOD. So if there is hypothyroidism, we can treat the hypothyroidism. If there is hyperprolactinemia, we can treat the hyperprolactinemia. And if there are other metabolic disorders like diabetes or hypertension or hypercholesterolemia, the patient can be advised accordingly. We can send the patient to a physician. We can send the patient to a diabetologist for further management. So like I said, PCO is not only a gynecologist's game. It is always multidisciplinary. We need help from other specialities to the, treat PCOD in accordance. Now, uh, the weight gain, lifestyle, all these things are there. We also prescribe certain drugs to the patient, that is medicines. So we give metformin or insulin sensitizers like metformin, which help with weight gain, which, uh, which help with weight loss. They help with diet restriction. They help with loss of appetite. So these are the drugs or myoinositol, which helps with ovulation. So these are the drugs we usually normally prescribe in a PCO patient. If the patient is having irregular cycles, we use combined OC pills or hormone contraceptive pills. We give them a short course for three to six months so that the cycles are regularized and the patient has that much time to work on their lifestyle and to obtain or adopt a healthy lifestyle. Uh, normally, there is no surgical approach to PCO. A lot of patients ask us, oh, can you do it surgically? Can you remove it? So no, PCO cannot be done. There is no surgical management for PCO unless and until the patient is an infertility patient. The patient is not able to conceive. She's been trying for a few years and still she's not able to conceive. In those kind of patients with resistant PCO, that is PCO which is not uh, there is no ovulation even with the weight loss or with the drugs what we normally prescribe for PCOD. There is no result with those medical management. Then in those conditions, we consider PCO drilling. That is, we do the drilling of the ovaries so that the patient can ovulate better and conceive better. So this is the only surgical management for PCO. Apart from that, yes, hirsutism can be treated. That is the excessive hair growth on the body. It can be treated with drugs. It can be treated with epilation, laser, threading, or waxing. So these kind of modalities are available, and patients can use them. They can go to a cosmetologist, and they can always uh, use these methods. And for the acne, of, of course, along with the dermatologist, they can use the cosmetic procedures or the drugs or the medications available for acne. So normally, when we give them a course of short OC pills, that is the contraceptive pills, we give them a short course for three to six months. It also improves the acne. It improves the skin of the patient. And it also improves the hysteretism. Or there is, we see a significant reduction in the hair growth. So these are the treatments what we normally give in a PCO patient. And of course, counseling. So counseling is also extremely important because PCOD is just about counseling. There is no treatment. Like we said, you know, we can write a few drugs and be done with it. No, but PCO needs counseling. The patient has to accept that, yes, I have PCO and I have to work on it. Because your 80% is the patient's, uh, you know, the patient has to work on itself. And then obviously the doctor or the gynecologist or the counselor can help them, support them, and obviously treat them in those ways. But the main work is done by the patient. So the patient has to accept that, yes, I have this condition and this is going to have long-term repercussions on my body, on my health. And yes, I have to do something about it. Because still the patient does not accept it, that the patient does not take it seriously, uh, it is very difficult to treat. So uh, what are the long-term sequelae for PCOD patients? What happens to them in the future? I mean, uh, are there any possible complications or the 
long term problems which can which the patient can face you know in the later run when the patient gets older when the patient gets married tries to conceive so these kind of patients they normally end up being obese even later on so the obesity factor will continue these obesity factor again can cause health problems which all of us know so there can be hypercholesterolemia patient can have hypertension in the future patient can develop a uh, uh, hypercholesterolemia in the future which can cause acanthosis nigricans that is those dark lines the patients have on their neck this dark silvery lines so patient can cause that it can cause diabetes in the future and metabolic disorder basically truncal obesity so these kind of patients they have truncal obesity normally a female the fat deposition is more in the buttocks and the hips but in pco patients they usually have truncal obesity which is much more worse which can cause these metabolic disorders in the future so it can cause these problems the patient once they get married they're not able to conceive so infertility is another factor now when obviously there is a hormonal problem there is a hormonal disorder so there is obviously the lining inside the uterus can gets thicker and thicker it can cause endometrial hyperplasia so when the patient is after 40 38 40 patients come with irregular cycles and extremely heavy bleeding after that so these kind of patients can have abnormal uterine bleeding which can cause endometrial cancer in the future and with treatment if this these patients they become pregnant and obviously there is a risk of abortion there is a risk of missed abortion the patient can have miscarriages the patient can have diabetes that is gestational diabetes in pregnancy gestational hypertension in pregnancy hypothyroidism in pregnancy so the pregnancy is also not very smooth and these kind of patients when they become pregnant also when they are already obese already overweight they have to have a certain weight restriction so they will not be able to put on the amount of weight a normal uh, bmi woman who is pregnant will put on so they have to have weight restriction even during pregnancy so that there are no complications later on so this is what pco is like i want to sum up pco in a very it is nothing it's a very vast thing you know we we can not sum up pco in just 20 minutes normally when we talk to the patient also we counsel the patient for almost half an hour we try to explain to the patient what exactly is happening in pco because they don't understand they always say oh i have irregular periods they take it lightly they don't come to the gynec they don't have menses for 6 months to 8 months to almost 1 year and they're not able to find out the cause so counseling is extremely important counseling not only with the gynecologist but with a psychologist a psychotherapist also works because these patients in order to lose weight they want a quicker way they want a faster way so they start fasting they start uh, you know they become anorexic in the sense they stop eating they starve themselves and they have eating disorders like bulimia that is they just eat and then they try to puke it out after eating so these this eating disorders are also extremely common with pco so that is why counseling is the main thing you have to involve the parents also because these girls young girls are still small 16 18 they don't understand so you know you have to involve the parents have to talk to the parents explain to the parents what is exactly the problem what is going to be the treatment so the parents can also you know help out the children concentrate on their diet see to it that they are exercising regularly they are having some form of physical activity be it yoga or you have your aerobic exercises cardiovascular exercises or you go to the gym some or the other form of exercise is extremely important and they say that when you have cardiovascular exercises or you do aerobic exercises these kind of exercises help with the glycemic index so they reduce the blood sugar levels in your body so even a 45 minute brisk walk is also equally effective in reducing the uh, uh, the uh, blood sugar levels in your body improving the glycemic index or again leading to weight loss so this is a pco in a loop a small good topic small topic but extremely extremely an important topic so the main crux of pco is your lifestyle you have to control your diet you have to have regular exercise you have to manage your stress levels okay travel 
do yoga do meditation include meditation and yoga in your lifestyle at least daily for 15 to 20 minutes in a day that is also extremely effective and it is important so these are the few things concentrate on and i think pco can improve it can get better and we can be able we will be able to cope pco as a group as a you know as a circle it's not only an individualized treatment we have to work together to control pcod to treat pcod and we need cooperation from both the patient and the doctor as well so thank you so much for your patient listening uh, this is all about uh, pco if any of you have any questions regarding pcod any queries anything you want to ask you are you can feel free to just ask anything you want Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. It's a good uh, informative talk. We have one question from our viewers. Uh, like, if you have PCOs, PCOs, what kind of medical problems uh, you are at as a risk for? See, uh, like I discussed earlier, when you are having PCO, you are very young because you are normally these girls come at the age of sixteen, seventeen, or eighteen years. So they will not have any medical issues at that point of time. But these medical issues can continue in the future. Means. at the age of 30 40 later on you can have diabetes you can have blood pressure you can have hypercholesterolemia that is your cholesterol levels can be high so these are the kind of things or you can have you can develop heart conditions you can have cardiovascular disorders in the future when you grow older so these are the patients which are more prone to cardiovascular disorders like your mi your myocardial infarction angina plus obviously hypercholesterolemia diabetes and hypertension so these are the main things which normally a pco patient uh, can have in the future okay. the other question is uh, is the endometriosis and the pcod are the same thing no uh, they are extremely different things pco is different endometriosis is different endometriosis is a pathological condition pco is not a pathological condition in endometriosis normally what happens is the menstrual blood there is a regurgitation of menstrual blood so there is a reversal of flow where the menstrual blood is flowed there is a reversal of flow and it gets accumulated inside your abdomen so the endometrial lining it gets deposited all over your abdomen inside your ovaries around your ovaries in front of the uterus and back of the uterus causing the symptoms like dysmenorrhea that is pain during menses pain during sexual intercourse normally also the patient may have a chronic pain in abdomen the patient can also have irregular cycles or a heavy flow and they also present with infertility so pcod is a hormonal disorder endometriosis is a pathological disorder so these are two very different things hey ma'am uh, we get another one uh, important questions uh, what is the difference between pcods and pcos see both are the same uh, pcos is a syndrome so what is a syndrome normally a syndrome is a combination or a collection of symptoms so syndrome is the patient will have irregular cycles acne weight loss hirsutism and uh, weight gain so these are the it's a syndrome so it's a combination of symptoms what is pcod disease is when the patient also has metabolic disorders along with pcod that is a patient is having diabetes the patient is hypertensive the patient has hypercholesterolemia so then it becomes a disease but when the patient presents with these symptoms at an early age patient does not have any endocrinological abno abnormalities or metabolic abnormalities then it is a disease so this is a difference between a syndrome and a disease the other one question is uh, why is it difficult for pcod patient to get pregnant see like i said again pcod patients have irregular cycles so when they have irregular cycles they do not ovulate so they do not have they do not produce the eggs normally of a female who has a cycle of 28 to 30 days she ovulates between 12 to the 14th day so in pco patients when their periods are not regular they come every 2 month 3 months so the egg is not produced so when the patients do not ovulate then they are not able to conceive so that is the main problem an ovulation or the egg the lack of the ability to produce an egg is the main reason for infertility the another one question is 
can IVF or ICSI help a woman to get pregnant with PCOS? Of course, yes. See, like I said, the ovaries are normal. The hormones are normal. Just there is an imbalance. So once you correct the imbalance in the hormone, you tell the patient to lose weight. The you tell the patient to improve her lifestyle. Uh, and you help the patient with follicular study or you can give some ovulation inducing drugs, the patient can conceive even naturally. You don't need to do IVF and ICSI for all o PCOD patients. Yes, you try with these uh, measures. You try to tell the patient to try naturally. The patient is not conceiving naturally. You've given them six months. You do ovulation induction. You do an IUI. If the patient is even resistant to the ovulation inducing drugs, then you move on to IVF or ICSI. So yes, of course, the patient can conceive. There is nothing like the patient will never be able to conceive in a PCO if she has PCOD. Another important question is, is it true or a myth that pregnancy cures PCO? No, pregnancy does never cure PCO. Pregnancy can cure endometriosis because in nine months you are having no periods. So that is why... Obviously, it will cure the endometriosis. Till you don't have periods, endometriosis will not happen. PCO will continue if you do not lose your post-pregnancy weight, if you do not get back to your healthy lifestyle, if you do not lose your weight back, if you continue being obese, overweight, PCOD is not going to go. It will manifest in some other way when you become older or when your family is complete. But it does not go with pregnancy. So that is a myth. The last one and very important question. If I have PCOS and PCOD and I can conceive, will the baby be normal or have a health issue? See, the baby, the PCOD or PCOS is not related to the baby at all. Okay. Yes, if you have complications in pregnancy, like it can cause threatened miscarriages, it can cause miscarriages in the early trimester, in the first trimester. Because these patients are more prone to threatened miscarriages, bleeding in the first trimester, missed abortions, the suddenly the heart of the baby stops. So they are more common with PCO patients. But no, because why? Because these PCO patients normally, they have not conceived naturally. It's not a natural conception. They are always having some form of treatment like follicular study, IUI, or they have done IVF or ICSI. So that is why they are more prone to these kind of complications in the first trimester. Later on, yes, if the patient has having severe hypothyroidism, which is undiagnosed, or the patient is having hypertension in pregnancy, that is PIH, or pregnancy-induced hypertension, or gestational diabetes, that is a diabetes which is found out in pregnancy or diagnosed in pregnancy, then yes, there can be repercussions on the baby, like preterm labor, the baby can have IUGR, or in, in gestational diabetes, the babies are usually fat or obese and they are overweight. So these are the few things which can affect the baby. But as such, your condition of PCO or PCOD does not affect the fetus. But if there are complications in your pregnancy, then yes, it can affect the fetus. But not every PCO patient will not have all these complications in pregnancy. That is if they've maintained their weight well and they are properly monitored by the gynecologist regularly, regular ANC checkups, then obviously the complications can be avoided and then can be tackled earlier.